the fact that they would not discuss the raises in the presence of the laborers when they do the same thing for the cops and the firefighters? That is just insane. I wanted to give you an update about the municipal workers for the city of Selma. We talked about them going on strike last week. This involved 65 employees with the cemetery, public works, and recreation departments. They were striking over the city council's refusal to approve the mayor's budget proposal, which included a 5% raise across the board for municipal employees, which, let's remember and put in context, is a pay cut in today's inflationary environment. Inflation is between 8 and 10% right now. So what is a 5% raise? That's a 5% pay cut in real terms. That's what the mayor was proposing, and that's what the employees were willing to settle for. And an increase in the wage floor, the mayor proposed to $12 an hour. This was the position of the mayor and of the employees working for the city of Selma. A 5% raise across the board and a minimum and a minimum wage of $12 an hour. That is super reasonable. In fact, I would say it's not nearly enough, but that's what the workers uh, said that they, were, they would be okay with, and so we support them in that. Currently, the minimum wage for the city of Selma employees is $9 an hour. The city council came back to the mayor's proposal with an offer of no raise, and a minimum wage of $11 an hour. Wow, how generous. And then they had the gall to get upset with the workers for going on strike. Some business owners were saying they were bullying the city council of Selma. Pathetic. Pathetic. So Brad Fisher at the Selma Sun has been doing some really good reporting on this and keeping us updated on the action there. And the update is that the strike is over, but they are doing something of a work slowdown. He quoted Dr. Denisha Hendricks of the Parks and Recreation Department, who spoke about the situation with a local radio program. Dr. Denisha Hendricks said, our employees, based on the actions of the council to reject the mayor's proposed budget, said they will do minimum work for minimum pay. For minimum pay, they will perform minimum work. Hendricks said it is not a strike. They are reporting to work, but they feel in their words, they will not be performing working as indentured servants for minimum pay. And this makes sense. This makes sense. I tell you what, you're not going to get my top performance at $9 an hour. I'll tell you that right now. It's nice to see a boss in the press not trying to destroy their workers as well. That's a very, very not common thing <laughs> that is very, very uncommon to see a supervisor in the press supporting their workers as they fight for a raise. So that's good to see. It's also good to see the press, I think, I think accurately reporting the situation down there in the Selma Sun. So we appreciate that. Um, but, all, you know, also it is worth mentioning that if the workers got what they're asking for, which is a 5% raise across the board for municipal employees, it would, of course, help help the supervisors as well. So, you know, it's not totally unself-interested. Uh, Brad Fisher also mentioned something that the mayor said in a recent episode of his apparently weekly podcast addressing the city about the comparison to the raises already given to public safety employees, which is police and fire. Let's listen to what the mayor said in his podcast here. $2.6 million increase in payroll for public safety. Public safety only police and fire, to do everything else that we talked about, that the department heads and I are advocating for the employees uh, that are non-public safety related. We're talking about $266,000. To give the laborers, our skilled workers, our middle managers, the proposed raises that we hammered out, it would cost the city $266,000. Folks, that's less than 10% of what we've already done. That's why we are saying that to do this for the employees that are not public safety related is not going to hurt what we've already done. 
We've already done 2.6 million. To add $266,000 to satisfy the needs so that our workers can have be at least approaching a livable wage is not too much to ask. Wow. I would say not, <laughs> Mayor Perkins. I would say not. 10% of the money that they gave to cops and firefighters is what they're proposing to give to the laborers. Now, it's possible, I don't know, it's possible that there are more cops and firefighters than laborers for the city of Selma. In fact, I would say it's probable. And so that's going to be part of the reason that the raises for the cops and firefighters is going to be more than the raises for the, uh, uh, for the laborers for the city of Selma. So, you know, that's something to consider. But still, we're talking about a pay cut. 5% pay raise, and we're talking about increasing the minimum wage to $12 an hour for laborers for the city of Selma. That would be 10%, 10% of the increase that was given to public safety employees. I don't think that's an unreasonable investment. Mayor Perkins expanded on the need to grant this raise to the laborers and the disrespect the council has shown the laborers. Let's, let's listen to this. It's astounding. Folks, I want you to get your calculator out and take a look at what $9 an hour. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to get mine out and I'm going to calculate it with you. $9 an hour. What, what you're looking at is 2,080 hours in a work year. That's 52 weeks a year, 40 hours a week. And you multiply that $9 an hour times 2,080. Folks, you know what that is? 2,080 hours times $9. That's $18,720. $18,720. That's the annual pay for a person that's making $9 an hour. Folks, the president of the council makes $20,000. The president of the council makes $20,000. The guys that are working 40 hours a week, five days a week, in the hot sun, are making $18,720. How can anyone vote to not give them the $12 that they're asking for? The $12 an hour times the 2,080. Folks, if anybody, 2,080, I'm, I'm doing it now while we're talking. That uh, time, the $12 times the 2,080 hours, that comes to $24,960. They at least got a chance. They at least have their dignity. They at least want want to come to work. They at least have something to take home after their full week's way of work. We're not asking for much. And for anybody to say they ought to be grateful and they ought to be thankful for what we're giving them. Do you realize that there are people on the council who were questioning why the employees, why the laborers were even coming to the council meeting? Why are you coming? What kind of games you playing? The mayor got y'all up doing this. No, the mayor had nothing to do with that. Listen, when the police department raises were on the table, all the police officers showed up at the council meeting. When the fire department raises were on the table, all the fire department personnel showed up at the council meeting. When the laborers uh, pay was coming up, they showed up at the council meeting and the council snobbed them, would not discuss it in their presence, went behind closed doors, and made a decision without any public conversation. It's not right. It's not right. You don't treat people that way. These are not indentured servants. These are not our... Look, we have a, a responsibility to treat our workers with dignity. And that's all I'm advocating for. I am at... So kudos to this mayor, man. He is, I mean, he's really, really laying it out there in extremely stark terms. The, the president of the city council of Selma makes $20,000 a year, which is a part-time job being city council, seeing, being a city council member for the city of Selma. Part-time job. And they are making more than the laborers. It's amazing. And the fact that they would not discuss the raises in the presence of the laborers when they do the same thing for the cops and the firefighters? That is just insane. Just really, really insane. Infinite Content in the YouTube chat says, I have never seen a mayor advocate for workers like that before when it didn't uh, apply to police slash fire departments. And yeah, me neither. Me neither. 
this is I this is all that I have seen from this mayor, but from this episode, from his performance here, um, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed with him. Maybe we'll get him on the show sometime. Uh, it, it's it it it. it, it it's just amazing. It's really amazing. Um, but the latest is that there is no budget. There's no budget right now. The council approved a continuing resolution while they continue to negotiate with the count, uh, with with the mayor. So their fiscal year ended last night at midnight. Uh, Friday night at midnight. They're in a new fiscal year this morning, Saturday morning, October first. They're in a new fiscal year, so. Uh, so as to ensure that they did not run afoul of the law and be operating the city without a budget, they passed a continuing resolution. They passed a continuing resolution to continue spending, which basically can, continues the status quo. Uh, you know, it, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and they're going to continue negotiations with the mayor about this budget. Um, and we will continue to update you on this as it unfolds. Uh, but we appreciate Mayor Perkins' advocacy for the workers there. And we hope that they get, uh, I, you know, I almost, uh, the thing to say would normally be what they deserve. But I think, uh, call me crazy, laborers deserve more than $12 an hour. <laughs> uh, so... I don't know, maybe that's crazy, but uh, but at least, they, you know, hopefully they'll get $12 an hour. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.